Okay, let's play this. Music, production, pause music, please. Pause, okay, here we go. Ooh. Hey everyone, and Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry I Christmas. hope you're enjoying your holidays. Thankfully, 2020 is coming to an end, and next year will hopefully be better for all of us. And 2021 brings probably the most anticipated event as far as the WoW scene is concerned. Ooh. I'm obviously talking about the release of classic Burning Crusade. I thought he was going to say, say Shadowlands patch 9.1. What the fuck, man? Crusade. But there TBC is still though. very fuck. little we know about classic TBC. The next big chunk of news we will get will probably be at BlizzCon line in February. True. And there will also be some bit of news surfacing around New Year, according to Nano. Oh. But until then, those questions are still looming around. So buckle up. In this video, we're going to talk about six important questions that we as a community still have about classic TBC. Yeah, true. What Number are they? one, content release schedule. Probably the mm -hmm. most important question that remains, aside from the obvious when is TBC releasing, is how is TBC releasing? True. You see, back in January 2007, when Burning Crusade first launched, there was more content available at launch than people could buy through. In addition to Karazhan, McTheridon, and Gruul, SSC, Tempest Keep, and even Hyjal were all technically available from launch. Black Temple was released with the next patch, <clears throat> patch 2.1, and people were still stuck on KT's bugged encounter for several days when Black Temple released. Blizzard then fixed Kale Pass and finally oh, guilds Nylum. could get attuned to Black Temple. In China, Mr. Peanut the Butter game launched way later in September 6, 2007. Gamer. That means that Bl Dude, I, I actually, I'm not saying this because just because you're subbing right now. I actually lurk your stream all the time. You're probably, you're unironically probably my most lurked stream. I will say hi next time. I'm gonna come say hi next time, okay? I'm when I'm watching Twitch, I'm either a lurker or a 1% of the time, if I'm in the mood, I flip on the old caps lock and I'm just spamming, dude. I'm a caps lock dot spammer. I'll caps lock spam the same thing over and over and over again. And to get by the chat, the chat filter, I'll just add a, add a dot to the end. So next time I see your stream, I'm going to caps lock dot spam your chat, okay? I appreciate I hope all is well, man. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Thank you, dude. And Donut Jared, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Black Temple was available at launch in China, and all those previous bugged encounters yep. like Keltas or Lady Vash were fixed at launch. A Chinese guild called The Seven managed to clear all the content, including Black Temple, seven weeks after the game released for them. That's seven yep. weeks to clear all of SSC, Tempest Keep, Black Temple, and not even counting minor instances like Karazhan, Gruul, and McTheridon. If people were able to do this all the way back in 2007, can you imagine how fast the content would be cleared today if TBC yeah, released really with all the content available. That's so we just fast. don't know yet. How will Classic TBC release? Will there be phases like we had Yo, with Classic WoW? Is the, the game the only going to be Christmas. released with tier 4 Yo. content? AKA Thanks, Karazhan, yeah. Gruul, SSC, and whatnot? Yo, new player here. What are the best classes in TBC? Okay, top 3 best classes, guys. What would you say? I would say... Okay, a mix of best slash most desirable, easiest for you to find a raid group. Shaman, Shaman. Warlock and Hunter are both insanely fucking good. Is it going to be easy to find a raid group as a Warlock or a Hunter? I feel like those spots, even though there's a lot of them because they're so good, those spots are still going to be very, very competitive. PvP? Resto Druid. Resto Druid Rogue. Rogue is not good in PvE. It's not that good. But in PvP, Rogue fucking owns and dominates. Like, you're pr probably your best two PvP classes in TBC, I'd say probably Resto Druid and Rogue. Seriously, they're really good. So uh, think think about that a little bit, I guess. Or maybe even, are we going to have a retail-like grace period where only five-man dungeons are available for two weeks and then raids release? Cool. Or is Blizzard just going to stuck to a perfect recreation of the game and just have everything available at launch? We just don't know yet. And we will probably get an answer to this in Blizzcon Online in February. But there is a possibility that we get an answer to this in the next few weeks as well. And how they decide to handle this question will probably dictate how enjoyable Classic TBC will be for everyone playing it. But for now, let's move on to the next question. Number 2. World buffs. 
This one deserves a video on its own, and I will probably make one Welcome. in the near future. But basically, if you haven't played Classic WoW at all, and you don't know what world buffs are, world buffs are powerful temporary buffs that players can get right now in Classic. They are scattered around the world, and those buffs increase the output of some classes as high as 50 to 60% more in some cases. They aren't mandatory to clear the content, and they haven't been I for the em. longest time. But now, with Nax Ramus being released, Clearing Nax without them is quite challenging, and way more time consuming and expensive. World buffs are generally hated by the community. Some people don't mind them, me included, but most people just don't enjoy having to log off from their character for days just to keep those buffs mm -hmm. before their next mm -hmm. raid, and That's rightfully so. Part. Now here's the catch. There is a world where world buffs are obtainable in classic TBC. Imagine going from Dire Mall to Stormwind to STV and whatnot, and then going to Shatrat and flying to your raid. That would be complete degenerate gameplay. And no. here's the thing, people no. did that back in TBC in 2007. This no. is Method's world's second Lady Vash kill. And you can see on the top right that players are using world buffs to kill her. From patch 2.0 to patch 2.1, world buffs still worked against targets above level 63. And then, when patch 2.1 released, Blizzard there's no way we're going to have progressive patches like that. Like, we're, they're going to run that shit off 2.4.3. We're going to have 2.4.3 itemization, 2.4.3 skills and abilities. There's no way they do progressive patch. There's no fucking way. There's no way. So there's no way. That being said, even if they're running off 2.4.3, final patch, like I think they will, you can still use world buffs up to level 63. World buffs work up to 63. So you will still... Hear me. I guarantee it. You will have people on tbc launch day they're going to be logged out with full world buffs in front of the fucking dark portal trying to bring two hours worth of world buffs into ramparts farming they're going to try to farm ramparts for two hours with world buffs i guarantee it i guarantee it went ahead and fixed that making world buffs unusable against targets over level 63 now the question is will blizzard choose to go for a one-to-one -one recreation of the game and keep world buffs in the game until whichever phase that contains black temple releases or are they going to remove world buffs from day one just on coins and bushes here's the thing okay as far as i know in 2.4.3 that actually works you can turn in and maybe i shouldn't say this ad ah, fuck it whatever I, listen if i get into the beta and this is working, I will report this, I'll contact Blizzard, I'll tell them to change this. Like, I, I, I will go hugely out of my way, I will complain about this so much. You can turn in, in TBC, even in 2.4.3, you can turn in coins and bijus, and the Karaji, the Karaji things you get for killing AQ40 bosses, the little Karaji tokens, you can turn those in for XP. So, people are stockpiling AQ40 tokens, coins, and bijus in the hope that you can turn those in when TBC launches and just sit there and sit on fucking Yojumba Island and turn those in all, all fucking day and level up super, super fast. I, I, I Technically it works. I don't think they ever changed that. I think they changed that when Wrath came out, but um, it, 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 they should change that. That's stupid as fuck. That's stupid as fuck. To be fair, they the latter option it. is probably what they're going to go with, but you never know. So give your opinion in the comments about this one. Do you want world buffs to be removed entirely from TBC, or do you want them to be available for the first phase of the game? Number 3. The Economy I touched on this a couple times in previous videos, but this is still a very contested topic around the community. On one hand, you have players who want gold to be completely wiped or limited to a few hundred gold when we transition to TBC. And obviously, this is assuming we get to keep our characters going into TBC, which is looking more and more like it's going to be the case. Check my last video to know why. And on the other hand, you have people who think we should get to keep our gold going into TBC, just like we could back... So so I was totally in favor of keeping all gold going into TBC, and I, I, I talked about this a lot, listed out my reasons, okay? And then I saw a Gressel sell for 198,000 gold. When I saw that Gressel two weeks ago sell for 198,000 gold, I was like, okay, we, we can't have this. Like, there's no fucking way. I, I, didn't, I didn't know it was that bad. Maybe I was ignorant, maybe I was stupid. I didn't know it was that fucking bad. I had no idea. So what I would, like... I just cap it at, at two, 2k gold per character. Like, I think that's fine. Because that gives casual something to work towards. It gives you it gives you a sense of, I am preparing for TBC. T 
TBC is coming out soon. It's been announced. It's February. I'm going to prepare for TBC. I'll stockpile some gold. I'll do this. I'll do that. Level up my characters. Set it at a cap. Give the casual something to prepare for. And then also severely hard fuck the people with 200k gold that are buying gold, selling gold, botting gold, whatever, whatever, whatever. So you fuck, you fuck those people the, the, the most. And then also give casual something to prepare for and look forward to. Let, like... There has to be some amount of preparation. Like, I'm getting ready. That's a good feeling, right? Preparation content is, is, is content Christmas nonetheless. Happy New Year. Mr. Cal, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't even thought about New Year's. We should do something, guys. I'll think about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When Vanilla transitioned into TBC, obviously both camps have their own selfish motives. If you haven't played Classic at all and you're a casual that has very little gold in Classic, obviously you would want to have an even playing field and have the economy completely reset so that you get a chance to compete as far as buying gear and consumables and whatnot. And if you're a hardcore player who has been farming gold for the last two years, you obviously don't want to see all that effort go to waste. The truth is, this decision shouldn't be made to cater to one camp or the other. This decision should be yeah, made on the, the basis of how bad of a level did the inflation reach in Classic WoW? Insanely Does it take bad. significantly less time of farming to buy your epic mount? Then there's a problem with the economy and it needs fixing somehow. Maybe increase the price of gold sinks. So instead of 5k... I think it would be a big mistake to not let people pre prepare for TBC to some degree. Like farming gold or farming resources or leveling professionals. I think they should have like a month or a month and a half of TBC pre-patch where you can level up Drenice and Blood Elves before the Dark Portal opens. And also you can give people criteria. Okay, you can bring this much gold into TBC and you can bring, like, we're not going to wipe your BOE items or whatever the fuck. So you can bring your BOEs and you can farm that and you can bring this much gold and you can bring in your professionals. Like, I, or what, what, whatever the rule, I'm just listing this. What, like, they need to have a clear rule set so that people can prepare because preparing is looking back on classic YouTube videos and my classic web streams, the most consumed classic content the most watched classic content the most hyped classic content is preparation content how to prepare for phase two farm this farm that do this do this how to prepare for phase three how to prepare for phase four how to prepare for phase five so i think if they do that starting in february we might be looking at phase six rather than being boring next ramus classic West sucks there's nothing to do phase it'll stop being that and it'll become tbc preparation phase People log back in, they're thinking about TBC, they're preparing for TBC. Okay, I need to get this much gold on all my characters. I'm going to level my alts I want to level. I'm going to farm these resources so I can level up jewel crafting. That TBC preparation phase is actually going to be super, super fun, I think. That's my take. Let people prepare for TBC. Just give us a clear rule. Whatever, whatever the rule set is, just give us a rule set. And so we can start playing the game again, I think, for a lot of people. Gold, your epic flying mount would now set you off 10k gold. But I assume many players would be unhappy with this. So instead, Blizzard could go with adding new gold sinks to the game. This is just a stupid idea off the top of my head, but you could have the vendor that sells the gigantic bag in Shatrat selling a bigger size bag that would cost significantly more gold. Adding a gold sink that every player would be interested in spending their gold on, and that effectively effectively doesn't hurt the game in any way. They did it to incentivize two-factor authentication on your account. I'm sure they could do it to fix the economy a little bit. Now obviously the thing that would have the biggest positive impact on the economy is a faster and more reliable banning of bots. But hey, that's a topic for- It's a crazy idea. Like, this actually would be super, uh, they should do this. They should do this. Let people buy 310 flying for like 20,000 gold. I'm not even kidding. Let us buy 310 flying in TBC for a disgusting amount of gold. There it is. Problem solved. So there is already 310 flying in TBC. There's two ways to get it. You can get Gladiator, Season 1, Season 2, Season 3 Gladiator mounts. And then also Ashes of Alar, the mount that drops off of uh, Keldos and SSC or pfft, in TK. Sorry. Uh, he's that. That's a 310 flying mount also. So let people train it. Let people buy it for 20,000 gold or fucking what, whatever the fuck, right? That's a really good idea, man. For another video. It's a great idea. For now, let's move on. <laughs> Number four, Danny. launch Merry day. Merry Christmas, dude. How what is Blizzard did? going to handle launch day? That's one of my biggest concerns personally. This is how Classic WoW looked at launch. With players spread across two factions, six different starting zones, and more layers that you could count. And it was still unplayable. How is the game going to be handled when all of this is going to here. 
Just add more layers. As I said, there was an infinite amount of layers as far as I know when Classic launched, and everyone was spread across six different zones in two continents, and the game still couldn't handle it. So I'm very skeptical on whether layering could solve anything in the scenario where everyone is put in Hellfire Peninsula. To be honest, I don't know how Blizzard could go about doing this. I know nothing. TBC is going to have to be layered like the entire time. Outland is a very, very small continent compared to the entirety of Vanilla WoW Azeroth, uh, Kalimdor, Eastern Kingdoms. Like, dude, seriously. I would be surprised if at any point TBC is not layered. It's going to be big time layering, bro about server engineering and whatnot and other than ridiculous ideas like forcing everyone inside dungeons for a few hours i can't see what they could do to solve this but maybe i'm just being pessimistic and the game will be playable with enough layers who knows number five battle groups let's touch a bit on pvp and classic tbc tbc is when the arena was first introduced to the game and back then, different servers were part of different battle groups. So for example, you had the battle group Rampage US, which contained servers like Illidan, Kel'thas, Ravencrest, and whatnot. And if any arena team in those servers queued, they would only be matched against players on servers that belonged to the Rampage battle group. Also, sure. back in the day, Gladiator rewards were awarded to the top 0.5% of players in the ladder for any given battle this group. And the actual rank 1 team would also be awarded the title for that season permanently. So if your team was top 0.5%, you would get all the rewards, including on, the mount, but your title would only last for the next season only. Whereas if you were the actual rank one team of your battle group, you would get all those rewards, but your title would be permanent. But the question is, with Classic TBC releasing, will we see the introduction of battle groups again? Thing is, the answer is not as simple nowadays. There's pros and cons with having battle groups in the game. For example, having battle groups would make queues way longer. But at the same time, That's the true. queues would be more or less competitive depending on your battle group. There would also be more rank 1 teams with battle groups introduced. Whereas if you don't have them... They should just have no battle groups and keep the percentage bracket cutoffs the same, like Gladiator 0 0.5, whatever, whatever. Um, to solve the rank 1 thing, because if there's no battle groups, you'd only have rank 1 team. I would just make rank 1 0.1%, right? So glad is 0.5 and rank 1 is 0.1. And then you still have like approximately the same amount of like rank 1 teams. I would just fix the rank 1 problem that way probably. Because uh, the, the queue time thing, I don't know, like faster queues is always better. That's the way I look at it. And it would, make, it would make it more competitive also having no battle groups. There's no reason. Rank 1 should be limited to 1 per server. Uh, yeah, I'm not really opposed to that either to be honest. There would only be know. one to three teams with permanent titles across each region at the end of each season. So it will be interesting to see if we will get battle groups introduced to the game or not. And whether they are in the game or not would affect the number of players with permanent titles, the number of gladiators, and how long the queues are going to be and how competitive they are. Number six, stasis servers slash classic plus. So with classic vanilla reaching an end now, and with Blizzard's last survey showing that our characters and servers are most likely going to be transitioned into TBC, one question that remains is the following. For players that aren't interested in classic TBC and want to keep their current characters in vanilla permanently, what do we do for them? Obviously, Blizzard was kinda hinting at the possibility of having fresh vanilla servers where you get to create a new character where they would possibly re-release those type of servers every couple years to cater to that demographic. But that obviously doesn't solve the issue with players that want to keep their characters that they spend so much time and effort onto, but don't want- I feel like this is, uh... I feel like this has been so talked about, like, and it's such a no-brainer, right? At some point, a couple months after TBC comes out, you offer Classic Fresh. You have Classic Stasis servers where you can keep playing your rank 14 warrior with Thunder Fury and whatever the fuck, where you can keep playing these characters if you want. And then also you have the current Classic servers become TBC servers. There it is. Like it, to me, to me, that's just such a fucking no brainer. Like if if they don't do that, then they're just like smoking fucking crack or something.
them to be forced transferred into TBC. One solution to this is Stasis servers, which are basically servers where all the content is unlocked, including Nags, and where you get to copy your current character into and just get to play vanilla forever if you don't want to play TBC. I bet there's a big enough demand for this so that you could fill at least one server for each region. And then there's Classic Plus, which is the stasis servers will be dead. Well, it's like you said, all you need is one server or two servers or three servers, whatever. Like you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't need to have that many stasis servers. Like let's say you have two or three popular stasis servers per region. Like there's gonna be, there's gonna be enough people per region that want to play on their main character forever permanently. Like th there's people that want to do that. So just put them, just put those people all on the same server, let them fucking just do that. And then everyone else can go play fresh or TBC, right? Easy. I, I guarantee you, you'll, you'll have enough, you'll have at least enough of those people to fill one, one popular server. There will be at least, at least one popular stasis server. Let him have it, let him do it, why not? Basically the same thing, but with new content developed by Blizzard being released in those servers. So you'd have a Crypts of Karazhan raid, for example, or a Hyjal raid. A lot of players are also interested in this. Do I think Blizzard is going to put in the effort and resources necessary I'll to do Classic Plus? Just I highly here. doubt it. I even doubt they would give Stasis servers. But as Blizzard put it, Classic WoW is quote, Stasis a servers. love letter for the community. So if there's a big enough demographic of people that are really not interested in classic tbc or anything past it it's not out of the realm of possibilities that this could be a thing so there you go those were six big important questions that we're still looking for answers to and to be fair there's way more questions than this but this video would get too long so there will probably be a part two to this video in the future as i said at the start we're probably going to have some news about classic tbc in the near future and i will definitely be covering I it as soon as it so, drops dude. so to not miss it make sure to subscribe to the channel whatever you do remember to have fun take care of yourselves and your loved ones Bye i almost died now. 2% HP. Oh my fucking god, I almost died right there, man. Holy shit. I was not paying attention. Yeah, I mean, like, they should do those three server types. I feel like anything other than that is a no-brainer. Or is, uh, is stupid, right? The three server types is the no-brainer.